Oh, I, <laughs> I'm not too sure about this one. I've seen this comment come up a couple times, uh, but after seeing it come up again in one of my more recent videos, I thought, you know what? <sighs> let's let's just check this stuff out and see see what all the hype's about. This stuff, well, it's this water wetter by Redline, and uh, well, this product makes some pretty bold claims, and many of you want to know, is it true and does it work in PC custom water cooling? Well, uh, today we're gonna try to find out. So right out of the gate, uh, I'm a little sus. <laughs> this stuff blatantly says right on the front label here, run up to 20 degrees cooler. Whoa. Now, if you don't know, water wetter really isn't designed for PC custom water cooling. I mean, right on the side of the bottle, it lists a whole bunch of things that it's great for, and not one of them is PC gaming. Also, you know, when they refer to like the uh, the 20 degrees cooler, they're referring to freedom units, not Celsius, but still 11C, uh, that's, that's nothing to scoff about. If that was actually possible, I would be amazed. I mean, who wouldn't use this stuff if it could make your PC run 11 degrees Celsius cooler? So, I mean, what else does this stuff, uh, what else does it claim? Well, it claims that it can double the wetting ability of water, which is just a really fancy way of saying it reduces water's surface tension. Um, really the same thing soap does. Not that, not that impressive, I guess. Uh, it says it improves heat transfer. Well, if that's true, that's, that's a benefit. Uh, reduces cylinder head temperature. Ah, we don't have those, so yeah, not a big deal. Reduces rust, corrosion, and electrolysis. That's a benefit. I know a little bit about uh, galvanic corrosion. I do say so myself. Cleans and lubricates water pump seals, which I guess if it's talking of if it's talking about just seals, yeah, that's cool, I guess. But if it's talking about lubricating the pump itself, that might be a benefit. It can make it run smoother and quieter, therefore, you know, making it, basically making your PC run quieter and increasing your pump efficiency. So that, that'd be nice. And lastly, uh, it can be used with all other antifreezes and coolants. Yay for cars, I guess. As for what's in it, I don't really know. I think uh, it's safe to assume that most of it is probably water. Uh, but I'm unable to find any like ingredient list anywhere and the safety data sheet just states uh, proprietary. So yeah, uh, but looking through the SDS, we can like see that it does contain 5.5% or less of boric acid and there's some kind of oil in there and some sweet sick ass pink dye. But other than that, mystery bottle. So this should be like a really straightforward test. Uh, here is our water wetter uh, loop right here, set up like normal. 7700K, 4.9 gigahertz, I to 64, normally run it for 45 minutes, 120 mm rad with a A12X25 and a standard EK D5 pump. And I've already ran the test with water and this is the numbers that we got and that's what we're trying to beat. And then we're going to add, basically we're gonna start with the recommended amount because on the bottle itself, it says water only, 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And then water plus water wetter, which I assume is the recommended amount, 202. So there's like your 20 degrees that they're talking about obviously that is in a in a loop and that's like a hundred and hundred degrees celsius so way hotter than your water temperature would ever be but that's what we're gonna do we're gonna see if we can see any better temperatures also i have this loop on its own power supply so right now you see that just this pump the, the pwm connector is not plugged in so it's just running full power 26.2 watts well it jumped up 26.7 essentially right around 26 and a half and the idea here is if this really does lubricate our pump here, I'm gonna hope that maybe it runs a little easier and we draw less power, therefore being a benefit to using this other than the sweet color. Directions for use, one ounce, three to four capfuls per quart. And conveniently, this system with this 120 millimeter rad is about one of these bottles. And this is 100 milliliters, which is pretty close to one quart. So that's how we're gonna start it. We're gonna add three to four capfuls to this loop here and run the test, see where we finish. And then we're just gonna go all in or all of it. I have a couple more bottles over there. Just in case you're wondering, this is like nine bucks. If this does turn out to be the secret weapon, I'll leave a link down below for you guys. Oh, it's pretty full. We need, we need to suck a little bit of that out. It's very weird. Probably shouldn't be smelling it, but it smells very weird. It's like a, it kind of has a fruity smell to it. So there's one, two, three. It's got a nice little pink tint to it. I do like the color, I'm not gonna lie to you. Might be worth using just for the color alone. Top that back off with the rest of that water. 
put her back together, and what do you got? I don't know, hopefully cool temperatures. Be back in a sec. So it's 45 minutes later. Our recommended uh, amount of water wetter and water has run its tests, and surprisingly, we're showing promise. Now, it's not a huge drop. It's uh, within the margin of error for sure, but it is a drop nonetheless. And maybe the problem is we just don't have enough. So that'll be the next, the next step here, just taking everything out of the loop, draining it all out as much as we can, and putting nothing but the water wetter super coolant in there to see if we can get even better temperatures. And also, I noticed that, so here, this is just a, a UV light that I'm using to build uh, a curing station for my resin printer, but just look at this. The pigment used in this super coolant or this uh, water wetter is UV reactive. So if you had a build where you wanted to do like a, a black light build and you wanted to find a, a good coolant that was, I don't know how stable it is, but you wanted to find a good coolant that was pink, uh, performed as good as water and had a little glow to it. Well, there you go. That's, uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, as for its lubrication ability, well, uh, I'm not seeing a difference. We're still looking at 26 and a half watts, which is what it was on water itself. Maybe we'll see a drop here in a minute, but doubtful. But let's drain the loop, put all the water wetter I got in there and see if we can't get a little more performance. First impressions, it looks actually pretty cool. And then you add this little black light. Oh, nice little glow, even cooler. Um, other than that though, looking at the energy draw of 100% water wetter, 30.8. So we're actually taking more energy now to drive the pump, which is kind of expected when I was pouring it in there. It is thicker. Um, it, it does feel slipperier, more slick. I don't know how you would put it. Feels kind of oily, obviously, but it is, uh, is a thicker substance, so therefore it's a little tougher for the pump to push through the the loop. Also, I was very uh, I overestimated, my, overestimated the amount of water in the system. Instead of a thousand milliliters, pretty much half that. We were about 500 milliliters, so the three to four capfuls still should be good based on its recommended uh, recommended quantity. And I'm gonna guess that that is probably gonna perform better than this. I think this might do worse than water. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm thinking that it might, given how thick. It is. Where's my fan? Let it stabilize here for a minute. Get some get some air bubbles out of there. Top her off. And then we'll run our test again and see what it does. Uh, so far, I'm liking how it looks. Well, I like how it performs. I don't know. So what do you think? Do we find the new super fluid, a super coolant, I guess you'd call it? Is this going to be in everybody's water cooling loop here shortly? Well, I doubt it. Because if you look at how this performed by itself, 100% water wetter in a cooling loop. It actually did worse, worse thermally and efficiency wise, it, the pump actually pulls more energy trying to push this thicker, more viscous, that's the word I was looking for earlier, fluid around the loop. So yeah, running at 100% water wetter, not, no good. 20% uh, cooler or 20 degrees cooler. Uh, no, that's 11C, definitely not. Now, if you use the recommended amount with distilled water like I did earlier, you could say, yeah, you get slightly better temperatures and then you get the added benefit of also having, you know, the corrosion resistance because it has corrosion additives in the, the loop itself. So yeah, you might, have, you might have slight benefits, but then you also have a pink loop. So if you're not looking for a pink loop, that's kind of a bummer. But in the end, would I run my loop with water wetter? Probably not. Now, that, that personally for me, I would much rather have just distilled water in it for one reason. Actually, yeah, for just one reason in and of itself. Uh, when, I, when I change or drain the loop, I often spill quite a bit of it, and I would much rather just spill plain old water than uh, water with this additive in it. One, because it has a pink dye to it, and two, it's just kind of it's kind of icky. It smells a bit weird. It has a nice oily texture. I just... It's just kind of a bummer to get around. 
uh, all over the place where it was water, you just dry it up. Now, a lot of people do run water with biocides in it, so essentially you'd have kind of the same deal. Again, though, if you don't want the pink dye, you're kind of stuck. But I guess if you would like to use this as it's recommended with the recommended amount in your loop, shouldn't be any issue. You might get slightly better temperatures and you might help ward off corrosion. But anyway, it was fun. If you got any, any other ideas, any other goofy products you want to see me do some testing on, let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time.